Hey people, got a 2010 Cruise here. This is fitted with the 1.8 litre engine. Um, this one's come in. It does have a head gasket issue. Um, it's got the good old classic signs. We've got the um, oil cap with uh, coolant that's gone into the oil. Um, it's pressurising the cooling system when it's running. The engine still does run, but it doesn't run well. Um, so I'm going to zip the head off and let's have a look what's going on. So I'm going to start underneath the car. First thing I'm going to do is drain out the oil. I'm happy just to let this continue to drain out for quite a while. Um, the more of this old um, oil coolant mix we get out, the better. So I'm just going to let it drain. While the oil is still draining out, I'm going to do the three nuts that secure the exhaust pipe onto the manifold here. Now they're usually a 13 mil nut, but something a little bit hinky is going on here. Something's been changed, so it looks like one of them might be a 12. The one that's up on the back inside here, you may need a um, extension bar to get to. So this looks like, um, I don't know, someone's patched something up over the years. The exhaust pipe is free and there's a gasket that sits in here as well. Up in here there's a bolt that helps secure the exhaust manifold. There's one on this side and one on this side. Um, using an E12 Torx bit. Zip those out. We'll also drain out the coolant while we're under here. So in this little section on the um, front of the bumper, you can reach up and there's the little tap to drain the radiator. Um, now I sometimes get a hose and put it on the little drainage outlet point to try and catch the coolant. It doesn't always work. Um, and this does help if you've got the um, coolant cap off as well. The other thing is you may find that there's not much coolant left at all. Um, I've got a dripping at the moment from multiple places, so I suggest having a couple of containers here. And I'll just let that drain out as well. And down the front here, there are two 10 mil bolts that secure this heat shield onto the manifold. If you're unlucky, these will snap and shear off and you're going to have to deal with that problem. Um, first one, so good so far. So they're the two bolts from that lower part of the heat shield. We'll undo the O2 sensor wiring it out of this little support. Now in here, in here are two bolts. They may be a Torx bit, they may actually be a 12 or a 13 mil head on them. Um, a lot of cruisers that I've seen, they're all a little bit different. With this one out here now, the dipstick can move. So sometimes I just push it out of the way, but you can give it a wiggle and then pull it up out of the sump. Um, and it has an O-ring there, which you probably should replace. With those removed, you can now wiggle this heat shield out of the way. Now it's usually a bit tight on these aircon pipes and these brackets here, um, but you can 
pull it free. Once that heat shield is removed, there's four nuts along the top and five underneath. Um, these are a 10 mil nut. Um, that's our next job. Now these ones that are in underneath here, you can access them through this hole in the manifold here. Just going to have to have a socket that will fit through. Now these nuts are really easy to drop down in here and often they get caught up on the um, oil cooler housing. Um, you will be able to get them later, but just don't forget about them. With those four nuts removed along the top and the five along the bottom, the exhaust manifold can come out of the way. Once I get this gasket out of the way, um, this is the throwaway. While we're still working at the front here, um, I'm just going to remove this bracket here and this lifting point. Um, just removing this gives me a little bit more room. You probably didn't need to remove the lifting bracket, but you definitely need to remove the bracket between the power steering pump and the head. Okay, next I'm gonna start just removing the plugs and some of the cooling hoses from this end of the cylinder head. This plastic clip here, if you reach in from underneath it with both hands, you can just slide it up and kind of move it out of the way. This plug here, just squeeze in on the top there, and pop it off. Um, this connector here is just being a little bit difficult. There should be a um, little tab that I can squeeze there, but it looks like it's broken off. But coming in from this side, I can just pop the tab up and get it off. Up in here we have a 10 mil bolt that secures a, um, looks like an earth wire. At this point I want to undo this coil pack plug. Um, it might be easy just to pull this off first. It just lifts up. This has a squeezing point at the back here. You can slide it out of the way. On this um, outlet here, it heads up and goes around the throttle body. There's a um, little collar here that you can just pop off. Comes out like that. And then this pulls up. This one's seeming quite tight. It pulls up and out like that, um, and it has an O-ring. I'd strongly suggest that we're going to replace this anyway, but keep these parts. Our next plug here. You need to sort of unlock it here, so this grey section will clip up, come up and out of the way. Then we can press down in here and slide it out. There's another plug at the back of this thermostat housing. Again, if you squeeze in at the top of this plug, it's 
squeeze in there, it releases the tab. <coughs> now I'll get to these two hoses that are back here. You might get a little bit of coolant that comes out of these. This pipe that comes from the oil cooler into the bottom of the thermostat housing, um, when we lift the head off, we're obviously gonna want this pipe disconnected. There's two bolts that come in here and they have a um, Torx bit head on them. So they're a bolt that looks like that. the second one with those two bolts removed this hose can come off the front of the thermostat housing so it just pulls away and this end you just give it a, a twist and it will pull out of the oil cooler and you can take that out of the way <coughs> 